So what is palliative care? Here's the World Health Organization definition. Palliative care is an approach that improves the quality of life of patients and their families facing the problem associated with a life-threatening illness through the prevention and relief of suffering by means of early identification and impeccable assessment and treatment of pain and other problems, physical, psycho psychosocial, and spiritual. And I've searched for a really good definition of palliative care that includes all that and is shorter. And I haven't really found one that I like, so I, I stick to this one. It's long, but, if you, but just about every word is important in that. So this is the Canadian Hospice uh, Palliative Care uh, Model for Care. And on this trajectory, if you have the diagnosis of a life-threatening illness there, and the trajectory goes along there, and death is there. In this trajectory, we've got the disease going from minimal to maximal where you've died. So it's the opposite way around from the other disease trajectories. And early on in a diagnosis of a light-limiting illness, disease-modifying therapy um, dominates. So you might, that might be chemotherapy, that might be radiation, that might be advanced cardiac drugs, that might be even looking at transplantation and things like that. And you, as you can see, as the disease goes on, the amount of disease-modifying therapy and the room for maneuver goes down. However, pal the palliative approach to care gets more as, as the disease goes on. And this is sort of obvious, but the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that neither of those two approaches are mutually exclusive. It's perfectly acceptable to be talking about palliative care to someone who's having chemotherapy. The two... Um, the two concepts are not mutually, mutually exclusive. So um, a lot of people get wrapped up in the word palliative care as if it means, well, I'm about to die. I actually almost stopped call, calling myself a palliative care doctor now. I just call myself a quality of life doctor. It seems to carry much less stigma. But we are stuck with the word palliative care for the moment. Of course, palliative care doesn't stop at the death of a patient. And that little triangle there is bereavement care. And Depending on how you have given your palliative care, that bereavement care is going to be better or worse. And we have a lot of evidence that good palliative care improves uh, the process of bereavement. So if you have a palliative care approach, what happens? Why, why would we do palliative care? Why, why should we do it? This is a study which, if you, if you doubt me, look at the reference. It's down there. It's produced by Zhang. A good death, by, by any definition that you can say, um, or a better death than it would have happened if you didn't have the palliative approach in the most appropriate location. Better pain and symptom management. Better long-term outcomes for bereaved relatives. We talked about that. Improved experience of care. Better quality of care. And I kind of thought all those are pretty intuitive. And the last one really surprised me. Lower health care costs. I actually thought that good palliative care costs more, but actually when you, when you take out those emergency visits to the emergency and the, the unexpected uh, visits to acute care, which you can avoid by giving good palliative care, you have lower health care costs. It's hard to go to a talk about palliative care without seeing this paper coming up. This was one of the first papers that talked about um, the advantages of early palliative care. So this is in the New England Journal of Medicine. And it looked at people who had metastatic non-small cell cancer of the lung. And it divided them into two groups. And, the, and this is New England Journal of Medicine. So the, the, the group who the, had the standard treatment got world-class oncology treatment and the normal other stuff. The other group was referred to a palliative care consultant at the time of diagnosis and continue to see the palliative care team um, from then on. And it just, just looked at them and see, saw what happened to the groups. Well, you know, I hope nobody in the room is very surprised that the palliative care group had, imp had improved quality of life. I, I, I would like to think that you're all converts, the fact that you're here, but it was, it was demonstrated. Here is the stunner improved survival. 
Now, anybody who knows much about oncology will recognize these curves. This is a curve, and it was, dem it was done like this deliberately, because this is the sort of curve you see on a new chemotherapy patient, new chemotherapy protocol. So the, uh, the lower curve there is the standard care. The upper curve there is the early palliative care referral. And this is the sort of thing you would see with the new chemotherapy protocol that's put in comparing it to the old chemotherapy protocol. So if you look at 20 weeks, more than half of the people who are getting early palliative care were alive as, as uh, opposed to the group who were getting standard care. So we had a 50% increase in survival at 20 weeks. Yes, they all died. But this is the, um, the first study which conclusively shows that early palliative care not only improves quality of life, but also increases survival. So all of those of you who say, well, yes, we know Dr. Death, Dr. May there, he'll just give you those drugs and you'll just slip away faster. Although my emphasis is on quality of life, good palliative care often extends life. And if you think about it, it's not surprising really, is it? If you're controlling symptoms and people aren't in agony and they're not terribly anxious and their caregivers are being looked after and they've got a plan and they're in control, these are all reasons why people might live longer.